we're basically trying to answer the key question, how much of this economic collapse that we have seen was actually driven from policy, that is the states and counties and cities saying you cannot leave your house, you cannot go to these businesses, as opposed to how much was coming from just people being afraid and choosing to do it on their own. And the basic problem in the economic sense is that if the disease spreading everywhere is both causing them to institute these policies and scaring people, then if you don't take into account how afraid people are, it's gonna make it seem like the policy is doing a lot more than it's actually doing. And so our basic approach is to try to compare consumer visits in to, to businesses in neighborhoods that are right next to each other. They're in the same metro areas during the same week, but they're across a state border where the policy differs. So try to just isolate what was the impact of the policy separate from how afraid people were in that week. And the basic finding that, that I'm gonna show you is it doesn't look like the policy was that important of a driver. Mostly, it seems like the thing that's been driving the economy into the ground is that people are afraid. Um, now, there has been a real explosion of work about the economics of COVID, and there are many papers in the NBR working papers and, and other places that, that we've read and, and you should look at. Our setting is we got weekly consumer visit data from a company called SafeGraph that, that has the phone locations of millions of people. So we've got over 2 million different businesses spanning 110 different industries. We drop nonprofits, we drop any industries where consumer visits are not really a measure of economic activity like a manufacturing plant, you know, and that sort of thing. And from January through late May, we can observe how many consumers show up at that business. And you see that it collapses, and I'm gonna show you a graph of that in a second. And we're gonna match these individual businesses and how many consumers visited them to county level policy information about did they have shelter in place orders, did they have essential business restrictions, sh shutdowns of bars and restaurants and things like that. Side note, we collected all of this at the county level where a lot of people are just using state level information. And we do show in the paper, it does matter to get the county level information because in a lot of the biggest counties of the country and in the places where they were the hardest hit, the counties changed the policy, even, sometimes even weeks before the state did. Um, but basically, we're gonna have policy variation in five, more than 500 counties that span in the same metro area some difference in policy. And there's two kinds of, of experiments, if you wanna think of them that way. Some of them are across time, like here in Illinois, if you're in Waukegan, Illinois, we have a shelter in place order in Illinois the week before the shelter in place order goes into effect in Wisconsin. So across the border in Kenosha, there's one week where there's a difference. Then there are others where the state never has a, a mandatory shelter in place order. So if you go to the Quad Cities region, uh, in, in Illinois, Davenport and the Iowa towns never have a shelter in place order where on the other side of that metro area in Illinois, they do. And so we're gonna take the 508 counties where that's true, and we're just basically gonna compare what happens. Now this graph is to show you there is a collapse. This is in log terms, so it's not exactly in percent, but there is a collapse in consumer visits to stores in exactly the period that others have shown there's a giant increase in unemployment, there's a huge decrease in credit card data and when people spending. The consumer visits track that very closely. And so from the 
from January, from the outset of March uh, to the trough week, which is the week of, of April the 12th, total visits drop by something like 60%. So it's, it's an astronomical decrease like nothing we've ever seen. If you break it out by industries, almost all industries, these are the, these are the worst 15 and the best 15 in our data, theaters, skiing facilities, botanic gardens, motion picture theaters, these, these things are dropping from peak to trough 90% in terms of visits per day. The best performing industries, they don't perform that well. You know, here, if you look at the, at the fifth best performing industry going to the vet, it's still down 40% in terms of visits. Uh, but the, the right thing to do, uh, like we say, is to have a comparison to something, okay? So if you kind of, uh, if you kind of cover up the bottom line and you look at this map of Quad Cities, Illinois and Iowa, you see the Mississippi River is right there. You got Davenport and Bettendorf, Iowa, on one side, you got Rock Island, Moline, East Moline, Illinois on the other side, and they put a shelter in place order in Illinois and they don't have one in Iowa. And so if you just go and do the conventional thing of say, well, how much were visits to beauty salons down in Illinois? The answer is visits to beauty salons were down 76% from January to the worst week in the sample. And so you might be, you might be tempted to say, oh, look what the policy did to visits to beauty salons. But our, our argument insight from the data is, but wait a second, don't you need to compare to a place in the same week in the same area that had the same level of fear but didn't have the policy like on the Iowa side, and it turns out visits to beauty salons went down almost 70% in a place where there was no policy. So the impact of just the policy, our argument is the difference between those two. It's not the objective 76% th that you see there. That's the idea of what our statistics do. And essentially, if you just go through our results, we show that if you don't account for the fear, it looks like policy uh, aggregated across all the industries cuts activity by 70%. But once you do this comparison, policy's impact is only 7%. So it's one-tenth the size of what you would get if, if, you, if you did it wrong. And if you one thing that makes us feel a little more comfortable about that as an estimate of policy is there's three different types of variation that we can look at. One are, let's compare output and consumer visits in places that are on the border with a state like Quad Cities that never had an order. In places like that, it's a 6.8% difference because of the policy. But we can also compare the places like the Kenosha, Wisconsin, where they do have a policy, there's just a difference in timing. If you look at the difference in timing places, it's, it's an 8% difference from policy. And third, at the tail end of our sample, you got a few places that repeal or let expire their shelter-in-place policies. And if you thought that the policy really matters, you would think you would get a very robust rebound of, of economic activity when they get rid of the rule, but actually the increase coming out of them is of the same very modest size as the decrease was going in. So it only increases by about 5% the consumer activity. It doesn't, the policy doesn't do things like, because it's phone record data, we can keep track of how far people went to get to the store. So if all that was happening is people were driving from Moline, Illinois, over to the Iowa side to get their haircut, 
that would show up as, as an increase in travel distance. There's no increase in travel distance. There's no evidence that, that in the week before they put the shelter in place orders in there that, that people rush uh, to do more shopping. So the, uh, the, the biggest thing is it's not policy. That's the evidence that it is not policy. The evidence that it is fear is a little more suggestive, but it is the following. First, the deaths, the, the number of COVID reported deaths in your neighborhood within the same metro area have a very significant impact on how much people go visit stores, okay? And I say my number one rule of virus economics is that the best thing that you can do for the economy is anything that slows the rate of spread of the virus. This thing is, suggests that spreading of the virus is a very powerful determinant of people's willingness to go out and visit stores. Second, because we have individual store information, we're able to see a clear shift in consumer behavior in the same industry from larger, busier stores to smaller, less busy stores as this disease progresses in a way that's not normal. It wasn't in, it didn't happen in 2019. It didn't happen in January. As you get more deaths from the disease, you see this happen e at, to an even greater extent. That rather than going to the, to the mega mall, you go to a smaller store in, in the same industry. And this is a graph of that phenomenon. It's not to say that the small stores do better, everybody goes down. It's just that the, the blue line here are stores in the same industry that had the bottom 20% level of traffic per week in January. The green ones are the busiest and largest stores measured by traffic in January. And what you see is that the plunge is much bigger for those heavy traffic stores than for the smaller businesses and the more mom and pop kind of stores. And, and as I say, the, the greater is the prevalence of the disease in your county, the more pronounced this, uh, this thing becomes. There is one thing, so, that, so that's our evidence that it's mostly fear, not policy. Policy doesn't affect overall impact very much, but there is one thing that the policy does quite a lot of, and that is it diverts business from one type of store to a different type of store, okay? So we track down in every place what counts as an essential business. So there are, the states put in uh, essential business restrictions. And when they do that, you see that holding everything else equal, Relative to this overall trend downward, consumer visits to non-essential businesses plunge and consumer visits to essential businesses go way up for a net of very small. Um, and, and in this graph, I kind of illustrate this for you. Everybody goes down. It's just essential business goes down less than, than non-essential business. And so there is that diversion. And we track down the restaurant and bar restrictions on, on um, live attending, uh, going to those places. And lo and behold, consumer visits to restaurants and bars plunge almost 30%, while simultaneously visits to non-restaurant food and beverage stores go up 28%. And that's because we're not we're not losing weight. We're still eating the same amount of food. We're just not getting it from a restaurant. We're getting it from the grocery store. Um, so in conclusion, our paper basically uses this detailed store level data that comes from phone records and this across county policy change information to suggest, the data suggests that the policy shelter in place orders themselves did not have a very big impact of the 60% decline in economic activity, we estimate about 7% came from these, uh, from these policy orders. And the rest uh, is very closely tied, we think, to, to fear. That 
having lots of uh, local deaths, having lots of store traffic, those correlate with reduced visits uh, very strongly. And if repealing these orders leads to an increase in the infection rate of the disease, we don't have any information about that. We don't know anything about the health side. But if it did, our results say you could easily have a reverse impact. You could, if you increase the number of deaths, that could depress economic activity by a fair bit more than you increased economic activity by repealing the order. So, so it is worth thinking that through when making those decisions. But the policy, as I say, did have a clear impact in that it changed where we went and where we shopped. Um, and that's basically our paper. <laughs>